welcome to The Ship Room, where we learn from tech leaders at some of the world's most successful companies. I'm Brad Anderson. I'm the Vice President of Microsoft 365. If you've used the phone, the internet, or TV anywhere in Canada over the last 60 years, you are going to know the company that today's guest works for. Please welcome Greg Murray. Rogers was one of the first customers on the planet to kind of go all in with us on this concept of secure mobile productivity and email. You rolled out Outlook to all your mobile devices. You were one of the first globally to do that using concepts of conditional access. One of the things that I know that you have been big on, you, you have this great balance as a CISO, delivering the security that's required in your role, but also empowering users in a way that they feel empowered and, 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 and agile. I think there's two sides to that coin. I think sometimes as technologists, we, we forget as we chase the shiny object that it's all about the customer. And when we understand our customers and focus on our customers and the best outcomes for our customers, then the conversation is much easier. The other side of the coin is that we have to understand our businesses specifically in order to protect them, to make sure that the bad guys can't defraud us or hurt our customers, hurt our respective brands. Our unit spends a lot of time with the business units. We spend a lot of time in strategic checks. We learn a lot about what the business unit's doing, learn a lot of what's going on in the competitive markets. You know, for us, it's the security of yes and here's how versus the security of no, let's not do that. Every day, the, the network that Rogers operates you know, has billions of texts that goes across it. Most of them are filled with some kind of an emoji, right? And so to better understand the use of modern you know, hieroglyphics, we're going to see a phrase here that is spelled out in emojis, and you and I are going to try to uh, translate it. What do you think this one is trying to spell out for us? It looks to me like it's rain. Yeah, I think it's raining cats and dogs. All right, number two. Time for sun with a parrot and, was that a sunbeam? Maybe it's a worm. The early bird gets the worm? It's like a worm, but it's got feet. Man, you were good on that one. Okay. <laughs> Clown house, fun house. Clown house, plane. Holy cow, this is a hard one. I just can't get over how cute they are. Man, I'm lost on this. You got any ideas? Funhouse with playing music. A clown in my attic is, yeah. is in my attic. I've never heard of that saying before. Okay, so you got a squirrel and cars parking. Given what the last one was, is it something like there's a squirrel parking in my garage? I don't know, par is there a squirrel parking my car? Brad, you're really good at this, by the way. Have you been practicing? Last one. Oh, man. I know who put this one together. That's a hedgehog in the middle there. What's that on the right? Burrito. Eat your burrito? I don't know. Never put a hedgehog That's into a burrito. One of the things that, that I know you've been a big advocate for and your organization has really uh, done a lot with is Teams. Tell us a little bit about how you're using Teams and how that's, you know, especially enabled Rogers in a, in a time of shelter from home, work from home with the virus. We were big fans of Skype and we, we found that Skype had a lot of capability. Um, but one of the things that we really wanted was more scalability and quite frankly, we wanted the raise your hand feature. At Rogers, we're very excited in, in video conferences and love to talk and share ideas. So, you know, we look at what Teams has offered us and I, I give the raise the hand feature because it seems like such a simple thing, but I think it demonstrates that Microsoft is really listening to customers. And when we look at that component, along with the reliability of what it provides, the scalability across our base, we just really like the platform. And we've seen a lot of really good feedback. You know, our end users enjoy it. The other component with Teams we integrate with customers externally and spend a lot of time, you know, being able to communicate, especially, as you said, in the current situation. It brings us closer to the customers, brings our teams closer together. You know, I'm getting some kind of an alert here. Let me see if I can get this out of the way. Uh, shoot. I think I just actually let somebody onto the call here. Um, who is that? Well, hello, Brad. What a completely unexpected and unnecessary surprise. You've got Greg on the line here. Worry not, Brad. I'm always prepared for something like this. And now that I see you have Greg Murray with you, perhaps I can share a few ideas I have for Rogers. Right now, Rogers owns all a part of the Toronto Blue Jays, the Toronto Maple Leafs, the Toronto Football Club, and something called an Argonaut. 
as well as having their name on the side of a Major League Baseball stadium and two hockey arenas. So what I'd like to propose today are some exciting new Canadian sponsorship opportunities for Rogers. And you tell me if you think it would be a good fit. Sounds great. The Royal Agricultural Winter Fair annually awards best syrup on earth. I can see the banner now, the Tree Sugar Championship brought to you by Rogers, and beneath it, the stickiest trophy on earth. It certainly does sound like something that would bring Canadians together. How about the World Poutine Eating Championship? I know they currently have a sponsor, but think what Rogers could do here. Up in lights, the words, go crazy for gravy, all eyes on the fries, the curd is the word, and Rogers with the dollars. Sure, the rhyme on that last structure is a bit tenuous, but it is for a great cause. Well, being born in Quebec, I definitely think we should sponsor that in Quebec. As recently as 1945, the 22nd most popular baby name in your fair country was Roger, but now it's a paltry 636th. At this rate, the name will go extinct by 2038. This cannot stand. Rogers Communications will become the official sponsor of the name Roger, and you can start by offering new parents a free year of cell service for every child they name Roger. With a data plan, of course, <laughs> not just straight cell, right? We'd have to do it properly, we are Rogers. I'm sure some of these ideas will work perfectly for Rogers and maintain your presence in Canada, because after all, you can't spell Canada without Rogers. Oh, how is it possible those two words don't have a single letter in common? One last question. Any large distributed workforce has to keep its users productive and secure. And Roger strikes that balance by focusing on the management and security of identity. Why did you start there? And how have you made it work? It's a really interesting question because I think in security or broader security technology, you're always trying to figure out where should you start and where should you end. And you know, for us, we kind of look at whether it's clicks or bricks, the customer journey starts with identity. And you know, the second component of that was we thought through cloud. You know, identity is the new firewall in cloud. And then we said, okay, so what can go wrong with this, you know, being security technologists? We came up with three main areas. One is the customer experience could suffer if we didn't get it right. Two, we'd be cost inefficient. And three, we'd be security ineffective. So what we decided is, let's do the reverse of that and let's we put a lens on of let's build a good solid program let's get our executive leadership team to approve our roadmap and our board audit risk committee let's report every quarter with clear milestones and let's make sure that we put the customer first on going throughout one of the things that we have on the ship room is while we're talking we have ai monitoring the conversation it collects what are the most interesting or important 12 topics and then you know gives it back to me in, in the form of a set of questions we call it the uh, the database does what was your first email address i can't tell you that that's redacted what's your fondest memory of dolphins feeding them i preferred that more than swimming with them it's just nice to sit down and have a meal with somebody if you could send your 15 year old self a 10 word text message what would i say practice more for emojis when on the ship room would you rather go bald or only get to cut your hair once every five years? This is the longest my hair has been since I was 10 years old. I I, I, I probably would probably go bald. Hey, it's overrated. Just look, months. you know. You yeah. own it, you look great. I mean, yeah. It's a Bruce Willis kind of feel <laughs> to it. Do you think it's possible to change the name of the Rogers Stadium to the Rogers Thunderdome? Uh, most likely not, but we appreciate the feedback. Do you think the Queen knows that Canada is hers? Well, under the statute of Westminster of 1931, technically we did reclaim it, and then 1982. So the Charles of Rights and Freedoms in our Constitution, but yeah, absolutely. She probably still thinks it's hers. Do you remember that time in the 2018 Olympics when the U.S. beat Canada in curling and then took the gold medal? No, none of us remember that. How much snow do you have to get before you cancel work and round it up to the nearest kilometer? I guess it depends <laughs> how far you are from work, Brad. If the abominable snowman exists, which cable package would he, would he pick? Ignite TV, 100%. Well, Greg, thank you for coming on this ship and hanging out with us. People want to learn more about Rogers or more about you, where, where would they go? Go to rogers.com is what I'd suggest. I'm on LinkedIn.
Thank you for joining us on The Ship Room. For everyone watching, we'll see you next time. Although I suppose negative century could have a lot of meanings considering how, so far, 2020 looks like the soft launch of Armageddon.